Hi there. This is Well Spotted, using natural markings to identify individual hyenas. My name is Olivia, and I'm a part of the Mara Hyena Project, which is run by Dr. Kay Holkamp. Our group has been studying the behavior and physiology of wild spotted hyenas for over 30 years now. When we're collecting data, we live at a field site in the Maasai Mara National Reserve. As you can see on this map of Kenya on the right, the Maasai Mara is on the southern border of Kenya. This reserve is beautiful and teeming with amazing wildlife, but our favorite animal is the spotted hyena. There are lots of things that make hyenas special, but I'll just mention a few. First of all, they're highly social. In fact, they have the biggest social groups of any land carnivore on earth. They can have up to 130 hyenas in a social group, also known as a clan. Every hyena knows every other hyena in their clan, and they have a linear dominance hierarchy. That means that every hyena has a specific rank in their clan. For example, here I've shown a list of hyenas in a clan, from the hyena in charge, pike, all the way down to the lowest ranking hyena, Cambrian. Unlike in many mammals, in spotted hyenas, the females outrank the males. My personal favorite thing about hyenas is how resilient they are. There are many diseases that are fatal to most carnivores that don't affect hyenas. They can also survive incredible injuries. My favorite hyena broke both of her back legs, so she learned to walk on her front two legs to get food and successfully take care of her two cubs. For these reasons and many others, hyenas are fascinating to study. By recognizing individual hyenas and knowing who their family members are, we can observe a hyena over its lifetime and observe its family over generations. You may be asking yourself how we can tell them apart to do this. We use ear damage and spot patterns. Over a hyena's lifetime, it will be in many fights and they often sustain damage to their ears. The types of scars and their position on the ears vary across hyenas and can help us recognize them. For example, by receiving tiny nicks and cuts on the edges of their ears, many end up with pointed ears like this lady here on the top left. Other times, they may lose a tiny notch from their ear. They could also end up with a tiny little flap hanging off of their ear. Sometimes they lose a large piece of their ear, or in some cases, they even lose an entire ear. This range of ear damage can give us hints as to who each hyena is. However, the best way to identify a hyena is by its spots. Hyena cubs, like these little cuties, aren't born with spots but rather develop them as they grow up. When they're born, they're black all over and stinking adorable. After a few weeks, they start to turn pale on their faces and this pale fur gradually moves down to their neck and their shoulders. As the pale fur replaces the black fur, their spots are revealed. At a few months of age, they get very fluffy. When they're fluffy, their spots can be tricky to see, but by the time they're full grown, their fluff will be gone and their spots will be visible. Hyena spot patterns are as unique as human fingerprints and they stay the same over hyena's lifetime, making them a reliable tool for identifying individuals. For example, if we compare these pictures of corduroy as a cub on the left and as an adult on the right, we'll see that his spot pattern stays the same. Now it's time to practice identifying some hyenas. Here on the top left is an adult female hyena named Ramon. One of these other three photos is also of Ramon, but the other two are not. Looking at the spot patterns, can you spot the matching picture of Ramon? Well, I'm going to walk you through it.
first thing I see when I look at Ramon, besides that gorgeous mug, of course, is this swoop of nine spots on her shoulder. Which of these other photos has the same swoop of nine spots? That's right, this photo here on the bottom right. But to make sure we're right, let's match some more spots. First, there's an L-shaped pattern of spots that I've highlighted here in purple. We can see that both the picture of Ramon on the top left and the mystery hyena on the bottom right have these spots. Under these, there's a line of five spots that I've highlighted in pink, then another line of five spots shown in red. These five in a zigzag shape, shown in orange. And two rows of three spots, shown in yellow. We can also look at other parts of her body, such as her neck, her hip, her legs, and her side. For example, there are six spots on her side, which are shown in green here. At this point, we can be pretty confident that this hyena on the bottom right is the one and only Ramon. Now let's find Rocket. This shouldn't be too tough since he has beautiful, distinct spots. Personally, I recognize him by his shoulder spots. To me, they look a little bit like a shovel, or better yet, a rocket ship. Which other hyena has a rocket ship on its shoulder? That's right, there's Rocket. To help us identify hyenas on the go, we carry a binder with photos of every single hyena we study, like you can see here on the right. However, this can still be pretty tricky. We study hundreds of hyenas, so we don't have time to look at every picture in the binder. Instead, we need to know them from memory. Hyenas love a good mud bath, which can complicate things further. During the rainy seasons, hyena hit up, hyenas hit up lots of mud puddles and it gets really tough to see their spots. Just when the rain lets up and we think our job might get easier, the grass sprouts up from all the rain and we have a new challenge. Keeping track of hundreds of spot patterns isn't easy, but it's all worth it. Recognizing individual hyenas helps us answer lots of important research questions. For example, how does social rank affect survivorship in hyenas? What about reproduction? We've learned that the biggest benefit of having a high rank as a hyena is having first dibs on food. Hyenas face intense competition for food, but rather than settling these debates in a tug of war, like we see here, hyenas usually leave it up to politics. That is, the lower a hyena's rank, the longer they'll have to wait in line for food. And by the time it's their turn, there might not be anything left. VIP access to carcasses not only helps high rankers to survive, but it also helps them to successfully bring up their cubs. They'll have plenty of milk for their young cubs. When their cubs are older, they'll be able to escort them to the front of the line at a kill. These cubs will also inherit the rank immediately under their mothers. That is, a hyena can pass her high rank along to her cubs, so they'll get priority access to food as adults too. This complex social system begs the question, how do cubs learn their place in the clan hierarchy? And it turns out they're not born knowing. While they're cubs, they learn their social rank through a process of trial and error with a little help from mom. When they pick on someone lower ranking than them, their mom joins in to encourage them. When they pick on someone higher ranking, the tables turn on them. Mom lets them learn from their mistakes, but will always lend a helping hand if they need it. In this video, a mother hyena carries her tiny cub back to the safety of the den.
We've also wondered, can hyenas improve their social rank or are they stuck with the rank they inherit from their mom? It turns out it's rare, but yes, hyenas can improve their social standing. They can do this by befriending higher ranking hyenas. In this video, we see that hyenas often work together in their aggressions with multiple hyenas ganging up on one unlucky hyena. A hyena named Waffles used this to her advantage. She started off as the lowest ranking female in her entire clan. When higher ranking hyenas got into fights, Waffles would join in to back them up. By gaining friends in high places, Waffles cleverly climbed the ranks of her clan, eventually becoming the matriarch. Knowing who each hyena in a clan is also helps us to better protect hyenas. For example, we know exactly how many hyenas are in each clan at any given point in time, so we can study changes in population size over time. We can also identify threats to hyenas' survival. Lions are one of the most common causes of death in hyenas. The other is humans. In many areas, Humans kill hyenas to prevent the hyenas from attacking their livestock. By studying hyenas, we could potentially learn how to mitigate these problems to the mutual benefit of humans and hyenas. For example, some studies have looked at how livestock owners can build enclosures to effectively keep out large carnivores, such as hyenas, lions, and leopards. Other studies have looked at best practices for livestock guarding dogs. There are still lots of research to be done in this area, to help us to best learn how to help humans and hyenas coexist. Now that you're a pro hyena spotter, test your skills by playing the spot matching game. The link shown here is also included in the description of this video, so you can copy and paste it into your browser. Thanks so much for watching today. If you want to learn more about hyenas, you can visit our website, our blog, or find us on social media. For undergraduate students in the area, we also have a study abroad program where you might be able to see hyenas in the wild. For information, visit our website. Thanks for watching.